Hi, I'm Brian with The Bonneville Shop. Check us out at www.thebonnevilleshop.com for all your vintage brick bike needs. From the factory, your vintage Triumph, Norton, or BSA was fitted with a rectifier and either one or two Zener diodes. These items, while fairly crude, were a mechanical means of accomplishing two goals. Number one, converting AC current from your alternator to usable DC power to run lights and ignition and charge your battery. And number two, limiting the amount of DC power sent to the battery to prevent overcharging. When the bike runs, the alternator puts out power to keep the bike running and charge your battery. The power is converted from AC to DC by the rectifier. When overcharging begins, the Zener diode shunts the current to ground and bleeds off excess voltage in the form of heat dissipation. While this system works fine under normal conditions, both the rectifier and Zener diode consist of fragile electrical components that can dry up over time or fail from vibration. The quality of replacement rectifiers and Zener diodes leaves a lot to be desired, so we suggest replacing them with a solid state regulator. Replacing the OEM Lucas Zener diode and rectifiers with a solid state regulator is probably the most common modification you can make to your vintage British bike. As such, there are a lot of options available from multiple different companies, including Podtronics, Sparks, Boyer Branson, Tempanium, Wassel, and Lucas. Further, some options have a built-in capacitor that makes for easier starting and will allow points and some electronic ignitions to run without a battery. Prices range from about $45 up to about $130, dependent upon features and options. Now, you may already have one of these installed on your bike and not even know it. Luckily, they're easily identifiable. Most are a box about three inches by three inches square, usually with cooling fins integrated into the housing and four or five wires exiting them. You may find one the size of a small brick labeled Mighty Max. These are no longer offered, but were an early regulator option fitted to thousands, if not tens of thousands of British bikes back in the 1980s and 1990s. If you find a regulator already installed on your bike, great! You still want to try to identify what model you have so you know its limits. If you don't find a regulator, chances are you'll still have the rectifier and Zener diode or diodes fitted. The rectifier is about 1 inch by 1 inch, consists of a series of small plates sandwiched on top of each other with a common bolt running through them to ground, and it's usually located in the area under your seat. The Zener diode is a small brass object located either under the seat or mounted to the front of the bike in a thin heat sink. When replacing these with a solid state regulator, you'll first need to unhook both of them. The rectifier and Zener diodes don't necessarily need to be removed from the bike entirely, but they do need unplugged from the electrical circuit. You'll also want to insulate these now abandoned wire connections to prevent them from causing a short circuit. Okay, so you've decided to fit a solid state regulator for increased reliability and peace of mind. Now, how do you know which one you should choose? The best way to decide is to know what options are available, their key features, and advantages or disadvantages of each of them. So the regulator options that we stock, number one, TBS-0018. It's a spark single phase in a Zener diode housing. Number two, TBS-0069, which is a Sparks brand single phase that has a capacitor built in for easier starting. Number three, TBS-3572, is the Boyer Branston power box with no de light delay built in. And number four is the TBS-3572A, the Boyer power box that has a light delay built in. Number five on the list, we have TBS-4030, a Podtronics brand single phase high output regulator with a capacitor built in. Number six, TBS-4034, it's a tympanium single phase. Number seven, TBS-4034AT, which is a Podtronics three phase. Number eight, we have a TBS-4034AW, which is a Lucas brand three phase. Number nine, we have TBS-4034P, which is a single phase Podtronics without a capacitor built in. Number 10, we have TBS-4034W, it's a single phase from Wassel. Number 11, TBS-4035. It's a single phase high output regulator from Podtronics. Same as 4030, but without the capacitor built in. Number 12, we have TBS-4036, which is a six volt positive earth 
regulator for pre-unit dynamo models. Lastly, we have 99-9882, which is a solid state rectifier replacement. 99-9882 is simply a replacement for the stock rectifier. While fitting one of these is a great solution if your rectifier fails, you'll still be relying on your Zener diode to function correctly. Next, we have TBS-4036. If you want to replace the Lucas MCR2 regulator on your Dynamo-equipped pre-unit motorcycle, this is the regulator for you. Now keep in mind these are polarity sensitive, so if your bike is positive earth as original, this regulator is just a ticket. If your bike is wired negative earth, there is a negative earth version of this regulator that we can order you, but we don't generally keep them in stock. Another bonus of this regulator is that it is small enough to fit inside the MCR2 enclosure, so it can be hidden to retain the original appearance of your motorcycle. Now, let's talk about options for alternator bikes. As there were and are multiple alternator options available, you'll need to know what yours has fitted before choosing your regulator. You may have a two-wire single-phase stator, a three-wire single-phase stator, or a three-wire three-phase stator fitted to your bike. If you have a two-wire stator fitted, you know it's a single phase, but it may either be a standard 10 amp stator or a high output 15 or 16 amp stator. To know for sure, you'll want to look for markings on the stator itself. If you can't find any markings, assume it's a high output just to be safe and select one of our high output regulator options. If you have a three wire stator, it could either be a single phase or it could be three phase. To know for sure, remove your stator and count how many pickup poles it has on the inside. Six poles and it's going to be a single phase. If it has nine poles, it's a three phase. If it's a single phase stator, your bike may be wired as six volt. By following the instructions included with the regulator you choose, you'll be converting it from six volt to 12 volt, and you'll need to complete the conversion by fitting 12 volt bulbs, horn, and battery to your motorcycle. If you have a three phase stator fitted, you'll need to select one of our three phase regulators. There's two choices for three phase regulators we have, one from Podtronics and one from Lucas. Electrically speaking, they're both about the same. Both will handle either the 10.5 or 14.5 amp Lucas, LAP, or Sparks three-phase stator outputs. The Lucas branded one, part number TBS-4034AW, also includes a quick detach wiring harness with it. The Podtronics branded one, part number TBS-4034AT, is slightly less expensive. Now, TBS-0018 is a favorite of mine. It's made by the Sparks Company, and this regulator is built into a housing that looks like the Zener diode heatsink fitted to the front forks of Triumph bikes starting in 1968. It's rated for high output use, it's compatible with all of the single phase stators we stock from Sparks, LAP, and Lucas. The second Sparks brand option we stock is part number TBS-0069. Also rated for high output use, it too is compatible with all of the single phase stators we stock from Sparks, LEP, and Lucas. Additionally, this unit has a built-in capacitor electrically similar to the Lucas 2MC for easier starting and in some scenarios a batteryless ignition. Next up is the Tympanium regulator, part number TBS-4034. Much like the Mighty Max regulator mentioned earlier, the Tympanium has been available since the 1980s and it's been fitted to thousands upon thousands of British bikes ever since. It's identifiable by the lack of cooling fins and a green or brown potting wax housing the electrical components. Now this is one of the least expensive options available and as such, its uses are limited to bikes fitted with a 10 amp single phase stator. Another low cost option is the Wassel brand regulator, part number TBS-4034W. Electrically speaking, it's about identical to the Tympanium so you'll only want to use it with 10 amp stators. Now on the other end of the pricing spectrum we have the Boyer Power Boxes, part numbers TBS-3572 and TBS-3572A. Both of these are designed specifically to allow you to run your Boyer Branston electronic ignition without a battery, which is why they're so expensive at $120 plus. Now keep in mind if you do tend to run battery lists with an electronic ignition, you'll need a top performing alternator and we really recommend replacing both your stator and rotor when attempting to do so. The Boyer power boxes are single phase units rated at 180 watts, so we don't recommend running them with 15 or 16 amp high output stators as they're right at that threshold. 
It's best to keep them paired with 10 amp stators just to be safe. TBS-3572A has an additional lighting delay circuit built in, so when the bike's started, the lights are off. After the bike runs for a short time, the lights turn on automatically, removing the need for a separate light switch on custom bikes. Lastly, we have Podtronic single phase regulators. We offer three Podtronics options for single phase charging systems. TBS-4030 is our favorite and the best seller of the lot. This regulator will handle the output from any of our single phase stator offerings, 10 amp, 15 amp, and 16 amp from Lucas, Sparks, and LAP brands. It also has a capacitor built in for easier starting and to allow running battery lists with points ignitions. We have had some luck in the past running bikes without a battery fitted with an electronic ignition using one of these regulators, however the charging system must be in top condition. Even then we really don't recommend it as a battery makes both for much easier starting and more consistent lights and it also adds to the bike's overall reliability. TBS-4035 is essentially the same Podtronics regulator as TBS-4030, just without the built-in capacitor. It will handle all standard and high output single phase Lucas, LAP, and Spark stators. Lastly, we offer TBS-4034P from Podtronics. This regulator is suitable only with 10 amp stators and is comparable to the Wassel and Tempanium regulators we featured earlier. Aside from the polarity-sensitive regulators for dynamo-equipped bikes, all of the regulators we featured here are 12 volt only and can be installed either negative or positive earth. Most 6 volt alternator grip bikes can be converted to 12 volt easily when fitting one of these regulators by joining two of the three wires together, and instructions for doing so are enclosed with all of the regulators. From a reliability standpoint, we really can't say any of these are better or worse than the others. All of them have proven extremely reliable in the field, and reported failures of any of them are few and far between. Now, one last point to note. None of the regulators we've discussed here are compatible with bikes fitted with the Energy Transfer, or ET Electrics, at least not easily. You'll know your bike has an ET system fitted if your stator has more than three wires. Bikes with ET Electrics require replacement of the complete ignition system, including the ignition and the coils, as well as the alternator stator and alternator rotor, and you can fit them either with a single phase or a three phase charging system if you desire. I hope this video was informative in helping you choose an appropriate regulator for your vintage British motorcycle. To view and purchase any of the products featured here, check us out at www.thebonnevilleshop.com. And while you're there, check out our other videos for more tricks and tips to keep your grip bike on the road for years to come.